Thanks for coming by for my daily devotions. It's December 15th, 2023. We are 10 days from Christmas, believe it or not. Today we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians 15, Luke 16, Proverbs 14, and Numbers chapter 15. Uh, we read the 14th chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians yesterday. It's a lot more important uh, message there than people might consider. But one of the little verses, verse 6, says, Now, brothers, if I come to you and speak in tongues, and that means a language, okay, that, tongue is synonymous with language, what good will it be to you unless I bring you some revelation or knowledge or prophecy or word of instruction? The, the point is you want to, when you speak, you want to leave people better than they were when you showed up. And that means that they need to hear a word from God. That's the whole point. People need to be built up. The church needs to be built up. That means they need to understand what's said. And so it needs to be spoken in a language that they can, that they can understand. So they're instructed and built up. That's the whole point of, of what's supposed to happen. When you speak, you need to make sure people were different than they were when you showed up so that they are made better. That's the whole point. Uh, I've been preaching sermons for f next month. It'll be 50 years. And the one thing you want to do whenever you finish speaking, you want to make sure that you've said something that makes people better than they were when you, sh when you showed up. And don't leave them the same, okay? You want to make it better. That's the point. Chapter 15. Now, let's take a minute and pray and ask God to speak to us. Father, thank you for uh, speaking to us so clearly in your word. Now speak today as we look at your word in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians. This is a, a, about the resurrection and the gospel. Oh, this is an important chapter. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to also he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle. Um, because I persecuted the church of God, but by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach and this is what you believed. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified that God, to, about God that he, uh, that he raised Christ from the dead, but if but he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. In other words, it's got to be beyond this life. Otherwise, it doesn't work. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive, but each in his own turn. Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when, our, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him 
who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. Now, if there is no resurrection that will now if there is no resurrection, what will those who do not who are baptized for the dead? If the if the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized for them? As for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I die every day. I mean that, brothers, just as surely as I glory over you in Christ Jesus our Lord. If I fought wild beasts in Ephesus for merely human reasons, what have I gained if the dead are not raised? Let us drink, eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Do not be mis misled. Bad company corrupts good character. That's a mouthful right there, isn't it? Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. All flesh is not the same. Men have one kind of flesh, animals have another, birds have another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are also earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly body is one kind, the splendor of the earthly body is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, the stars another, the, and star differs from star in splendor. So will it be at the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor and raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body and is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last, Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural, and after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. As And as is the man from heaven, so are those who are uh, who who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I declare, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all be asleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed." For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. De death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, Stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. That is a powerful chapter, powerful chapter. Proverbs chapter 14. The wise woman builds her house, but with her own hands the foolish one tears hers down. He whose walk is upright fears the Lord, but he whose ways are devious despises him. A fool's talk brings a rod to his back, but the lips of the wise protect him, protect them. Where there is no oxen, where, where there are no oxen, the manger is empty, but from the strength of an ox comes an abundant harvest. A truthful witness does not deceive, but a false witness pours out lies. The mocker seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge comes easily to the discerning. Stay away from a foolish man or you will not find knowledge on his lips. The wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways, but, but the folly of fools is deception. Fools mock at making amends for sin, but goodwill is found among those who are upright. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can share its joy. The house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the upright will flourish. There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. Even in laughter, the heart may ache, and joy may end in grief. The faithless will be fully repaid for their ways, and the good man rewarded for his. A simple man believes anything, but a prudent man gives thought to his steps. A wise man fears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot-headed and reckless. 
A quick-tempered man gives does foolish things, and a crafty man is hatred. The simple inherit folly, but the prudent are crowned with knowledge. Evil men will bow down in the presence of the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. The poor are shunned even by their neighbors, but the rich have many friends. He who despises his neighbor sins, but blessed is he who is kind to the needy. Do not those who plot evil go astray, but those who plan for what is good find love and faithfulness. All hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. The wealth of the wise is their crown, but the folly of fools yields folly. A truthful witness saves lives, but a false witness is deceitful. He who fears the Lord has a secure fortress, for his children will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. A large population is a king's glory, but without subjects, a prince is ruined. A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays folly. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down, but even in death the righteous have a refuge. Wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning, and even among fools she lets herself be known. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. A king delights in a wise servant, but a shameful servant incurs his wrath. And then Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15. Uh, Proverbs is so phenomenal. Numbers chapter 15. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, After you enter the land I'm giving you as a home, and you present to the Lord offerings made by fire from the herd or the flock, or as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, whether burnt offerings or sacrifices for special vows or free will offerings or festival offerings. Then the one who brings his offering shall present to the Lord grain offerings of a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a quarter of a hint of oil. With each lamb for the bird offering or the sacrifice, prepare a quarter of a hen of wine as a drink offering. With a ram, prepare a grain offering of two-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a third of a hen of oil. And a third of a hen of wine as a drink offering. Offer it as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. When you prepare a young bull as a bird offering or sacrifice for a special vow or a fellowship offering to the Lord, bring with the bull a grain offering of three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with a half of hen of oil. Also bring half a hen of wine as a drink offering. It will be an offering made by fire and aroma pleasing to the Lord. Each bull or ram, each lamb or young goat is to be prepared in this manner. Do this for each one for as many as you prepare. Everyone who is native born must, must do these things in this way when he brings an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord. <clears throat> for the generations to come, whenever an alien or anyone else living among you presents an offering made by fire as an aroma pleasing to the Lord, he must do exactly as you do. The community is to have the same rules for you and for the alien living among you. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the alien shall be the same before the Lord. The same laws and regulations will apply to both, both, both to you and the alien living among you. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, When you enter the land of which I am taking you, and you eat the food of the land, present a portion as an offering to the Lord. Present a cake from the first, from the first of your ground meal, and present it as an offering from the threshing floor. Throughout the generations to come, you are to give this offering to the Lord from the first of your ground meal. Now, if you unintentionally fail to keep any of these commands the Lord gave Moses, any of the Lord's commands to you through him, from the day the Lord gave them, continuing through the generations to come, and this is done unintentionally without the community being aware of it, then the whole community is to offer a young bull for a bird offering as an aroma, pleasing to the Lord, along with its prescribed grain offering and drink offering and a male goat for a sin offering. The priest is to make atonement for the whole Israelite community and they will be forgiven. For it was not intentional and they have brought uh, to the Lord, they have brought to the Lord for their wrong an offering made by fire and a sin offering. The whole Israelite community and the aliens living among you 
among them will be forgiven because of the people were, because all the people were involved in the unintentional wrong. But if just one person sins unintentionally, he must bring a year-old female goat for a sin offering. The priest is to make atonement before the Lord for the one who erred by sinning unintentionally, and when atonement has been made for him, he will be forgiven. One and the same law applies to everyone who sins unintentionally, whether he is a native-born or Israelite or an alien. But everyone who sins defiantly, whether native-born or alien, blasphemes the Lord, and that person must be cut off from the people because he has despised the Lord's word and broken his commands. That person must surely be cut off. His guilt remains on him. While the Israelites were in the desert, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly, and they kept him in custody because it was not clear what should be done with him to him. And the Lord said to Moses, the man must die. The whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. So the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garments with a blue cord on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at so that you will remember all the commands of the Lord uh, the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your God. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. God has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us today. Uh, Father, write a new law in our hearts. Make us different because we heard from you. Change us, Father. Make us your people your way and impact our lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.